you are looking at a uh, homemade uh, three string instrument obviously uh, it is homemade and the lady who purchased this instrument was born on a farm in Ohio in 1950 and I'm sorry those numbers here let's put them right side up are you dizzy yet all right Farm 1950, Ohio, 12900. Yeah. All right. What she has asked me to do is to turn this into a tenor guitar. All right. So I get to alter this thing. Um, look at these bushings that go through for the string through the body. They go all the way through. The saddle is not sitting on a flat surface, nor is it making full contact here at the bottom. So uh, an interesting uh, bit of work there. And the, the machine heads, as you can see, uh, are spaced kind of odd. It's walnut, oak, and oak, and I have to move this machine head. I also have to redo the nut, redo the saddle, blah, blah, blah. So I have my work seriously cut out for me. Beautiful old instrument. Uh, boy, it's gorgeous, and it's heavy. Um, did a good job uh, with the weight. And uh, the construction looks pretty solid. Um, it's a well-built instrument. I have no idea where this came from or who built it. So if you have information on that or know somebody that does this sort of stuff or the guy that would have used this license plate, uh, let me know. We're having to switch it out to a four-stringed instrument. So um, I pulled the machine head and used a piece of dowel to fill the hole. I have also discovered that the parts that were used for the um, grommets for the strings to pass through the body here are actually stems uh, to hold in bicycle spokes and I went to our uh, local bike shop here in LeGrand. They had them and Stu what's the name of that bike shop over there? Do you, know, do you remember? I remember off the top of my head. Is it Blue Mountain that sounds right. Bicycles, maybe? Mm -hmm. They might be called Blue Mountain Bicycles. They're right downtown on Adams Avenue in LaGrande, Oregon. If you're in LaGrande and you need a bicycle shop, go there. Because I went over there. They had these. And I only needed two of them. And I asked them how much. And they just said, you're all good. So I told them I'd bring the guitar in when I was done to let them see. This is going to be turned into a tenor-style guitar. Uh, so I've gotten those parts. Um, I'm going to be building a new nut so that I can accommodate four strings. And we've filled the uh, machine head hole uh, up there in the headstock. And <clears throat> when that's all done, you're going to be like, oh, that's ugly. No. I'm going to overlay that with this piece of uh, walnut and then finish it with uh, tongue oil. Uh, like the rest of the instrument's already been finished with tongue oil, I believe preemptive strikes that I've done I have filed down all of the fret edges these things this was a really bad cheese grater um, so all of that stuff is now smooth uh, so I have my workout cut out for me because I'm gonna have to build a new saddle uh, for this thing um, what I may end up doing is making a new foot for this saddle and then uh, raising the saddle up a little bit so that I can file off the end where there are notches for three strings, one, two, and three. So I'm in process uh, of doing this and a lot of work left to do, uh, but the work is going. I'm gonna let that sit for an hour or so, cut it off, sand it down, get her looking pretty. All right. Well, you know how it goes when you're working on instruments. Uh, you get ahead of yourself and you do a bunch of stuff and then uh, you fail to video it. So I have new holes aligned. I've plugged the uh, spare hole here. I'm going to leave that. Um, I have removed the machine heads up here. Uh, spot filled some holes uh, that were in this a rough spot in the wood and overlaid this with a beautiful piece of uh, walnut that I got from the Hobby Habit here in LeGrand. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. We'll finish that with some uh, tongue oil for sure. I'm uh, going to drill it and finish it, and uh, then I've got to drill some holes here through the body. 
uh, to get the uh, uh, ferrules, whatever you want to call them, uh, through there. And, and there they are. And that's what the original owner or builder used. I intend to do the same thing. Thank you, uh, Mountain Works Bicycles and uh, Hobby Habit for uh, these materials. A uh, lot to do uh, still on this thing. Uh, look at the maple on that neck. That's beautiful. A beautiful piece of maple. Right on. This is totally electric, uh, non-acoustic at all. Um, what I've decided to do was add another um, piece of laminate to the top to increase the thickness of the uh, headstock of this guitar so that the machine heads um, will mount and sit uh, correctly. So I've done that and uh, I'm about to polish these frets up while I'm waiting for glue to dry. I'm going to let that set up for oh, an hour or two. I'm using Tight Bond uh, Original and uh, great glue. I love that stuff. And it's easy to get undone. Uh, you can clean that up with uh, just some water and a rag. Uh, it's really awesome. If somebody ever wants to take these laminates off of here, they can just simply heat it up. Uh, it, it's, uh, it can be broken down with heat and or water. Uh, it makes a very good uh, bond. Uh, I'm really proud of that stuff. So we're going to polish up these frets a bit today. And we will see what that looks like. I have no idea what this fret material is. Um, it looks like it's got a lot of brass in it. Uh, so it's fairly soft, I'm guessing. Yeah. And, well, we're getting hard to work on getting these through-the-body um, holes drilled today. Have all that done. Should have this thing pretty close to being done today. All right, so here are our frets, and I am astonished to find that they are actually nickel. Uh, can you see where I stopped filing? Right there on that fret, said dead center of the monitor. This one has been filed. <laughs> Those things are oxidized really badly, so we'll get them all cleaned up, all of them. There we go. All right, um, the soon to be tenor guitar now has four through the body string ferrules. Uh, those are bike spoke wheel holders, spoke holders. Yep, they work great. What a great idea. My compliments on that. We have a nut with the string spacing etched out, and we have four machine heads on here now. Yeah with a uh, walnut overlay yeah she's coming along yeah and it's not finished yet um, I'm gonna do some setup work on this then remove the hardware I want to get everything making sure it's sound before I put finish on something and discover I've got to totally change that so this uh, saddle will likely not be the final saddle Right there is the um, mark for the perfect distance between the nut and the saddle. And if I put this saddle right there, it tips over. It sits soundly right in that area, but still it's not making contact with the, the surface of the guitar. I am not real happy with that. It wobbled a little bit. So, I have brought in a beautiful piece of maple that I may uh, end up using to make a new saddle that will um, fit over this section and be a nice sound platform for the, uh, the actual, or I'm sorry, bridge. Um, make a bridge out of for the new saddle, which I'm going to have to build a new one. Um, yeah. So, uh, progress being made. I'm going to use this uh, bridge uh, to, or saddle to uh, check my string spacing and see how that all lines up. Whew, lots to do. Got to do something, take it apart, do it again. Take it apart, do it again. You know, it's, uh, uh, I wish I just built this to begin with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here is the block of maple I will use uh, for the saddle, and I have already begun grinding on it to get it to 
uh, accommodate the numbers on this and in the future I will probably be coloring this to expose the the digits that are going to get somewhat covered up part of the two and a little bit of the nine and this lower ed bottom edge of the two are going to get covered by this uh, so uh, I'm going to start grinding away and I have my areas marked out where I need to remove material Ah, oh, and the power is out. Uh, trying to work on stuff today, and we've lost our power grid here in our beautiful city. Oh, boy. Boy, I was right in the middle of uh, making some good progress on this instrument. And uh, I hope everybody's okay. Uh, I hope it wasn't a terrible accident. I hope there's just a malfunction uh, in our power grid and our hopes that our uh, 
electrical line workers will uh, get this repaired as soon as possible. Hey, you need this t-shirt. All right, so some footage of the uh, work that I did on the uh, bridge, and I have now shaped this saddle and gotten the intonation on the saddle correct on that. Now I'm about to put some uh, finish on the uh, headstock to get that all beautified. So I'm gonna cover this in tongue oil uh, before I do my final installation on this. Whew, and we will see what happens here. Uh, by the way, the electronics work. No, you don't get to hear it yet. All right. Well, we are getting down to the wire on the tenor guitar. Yeah, it doesn't, nothing's necessarily perfect on this, uh, but it wasn't to begin with. What I've done is uh, I've just put a uh, final coat of tongue oil on the instrument and uh, need to allow this to cure up for about 10 minutes. Then I'll buff it out and I'll begin the uh, setup with respect to strings and everything. Here we go. Almost done. There it is. Uh-huh. So here she is in all of her glory and we'll remove that. <laughs> Tone, master volume, and then uh, this uh, this is a tone circuit. Seems much quieter turned all the way down. It's got some hum in it as you start to crank this up. Um, I, I believe that this engages a capacitor at some place in the circuit. I'm not 100% certain on uh, what this control does. The license plate, I believe, has been glued down to the, the wood for the body, uh, and I am not going to remove that to get into the electronics to see what's going on with that. Uh, I've pulled the screws and was unable to pull the... Uh, license plate off of here. I believe it's been glued down, which is unfortunate, but uh, probably keeps it from rattling. Really cool instrument. It's all set up and I'm allowing the uh, one last uh, layer of tongue oil to, uh, to dry uh, on the instrument and uh, she'll be going home with uh, her mama. I think in tomorrow I'm going to let this cure for 24 hours and send her home. Hey. Very cool instrument. Proud of this one. We'll see. I may have to rework this nut. I'm going to I'm going to send it home with the owner and if she feels like the string action up here is is not correct, uh, it just feels a little odd uh to me. Um the string spacing is the same at this end as it is on the saddle. Uh I can't spread it like a normal guitar because the neck is so narrow uh, and it's a millimeter narrower here than it is up here which is completely backwards to a typical neck and it's not straight it has some curve to it so I feel like the strings are way too close together um, but I've got them spaced correctly yeah 
There we go. And we've wired it up with uh, acoustic. 24, 22. Yeah, 24, 22, 14, and a 10. E, A, D, and G. There you go. Just like a mandolin. All right. Peace, y'all.